Hello, everybody. Uh, hopefully, uh, this is Walt Miner, um, the uh, AGL community manager. So if you're familiar with AGL, um, you know, you've probably heard my voice on, on meetings before. If not, uh, welcome to the meeting here. Um, also with me is uh, Jan Simon Muller to answer questions at the end. And uh, some other folks from the uh, AGL community I can see have joined as well who can help answer questions. Um, because it turns out that I really don't know that much. Um, so I just have a few slides to uh, introduce AGL. Uh, didn't want to repeat too much of what Dan Kaushi showed during the keynote, um, but just wanted to give you some some of the highlights of the developer the development process. Um, and I also these slides I don't think I posted them on Sked yet, but I'll put them there right after this. Uh, so you can download them. There's a lot of links uh, in here that you can uh, you can click on for developer resources and uh, things things like that. So we'll get started here. So what is AGL? Well, Dan already could discuss this earlier this morning or this evening. Um, we're a collaborative Linux-based collaborative project based hosted at the Linux Foundation. Um, focused on uh, rapid innovation of vehicle software using the AGL unified code base. And he, Dan, uh, very nicely explained the origins of the, the term unified code base uh, during his keynote session. We have, uh, like he said, 11 um, OEMs who are currently members of AGL, and we will be announcing a 12th in January. Um, so that's very exciting. So the 11 that we already have account for about 60% of all of the vehicle shipments worldwide. And you can see we have most of the, the Japanese uh, vendors, the OEMs as well, you know, Honda, Toyota, uh, Mazda, uh, Subaru, Mitsubishi, uh, etc. We also have uh, Hyundai in Korea, Mercedes-Benz in uh, Europe, Ford here in the U.S., and uh, SAIC in in, in um, China. We have now, as Dan slide earlier, 160 members worldwide across the different tier level, different membership tiers, um, and AGL is the, the only um, organization focused on all software in the car. And as, as uh, we like to say, if, if there's a Linux running in the car, we think it should be running uh, automotive grade Linux. Uh, and that covers instrument cluster, uh, our traditional infotainment systems that we've been focusing on, moving into telematics and uh, head up displays and ADAS. Um, we're working with uh, the ELISA project on uh, adding functional safety. Um, so that's uh, what we do. The unified code base is really focused on a single, having a single software platform with uh, a variety of reference hardware and applications available for that, ref for that single co code base. And our goal has been to provide uh, seventy percent of the base platform for production projects, and really since the the start of AGL, um, focused a lot on creating an e you know cultivating an ecosystem of of develop not just the software but developers and suppliers and automotive expertise drawing from automotive expertise all working on this single platform, and you'll see if you uh, if you attend our meetings you'll see that there's people from different tier ones and different OEMs who are actively participating in, in, all, par in all parts of the project. Um, here's the latest 2020 schedule. Um, we have just decided in the last week or two to, to do a 9.04 release for Icefish. Um, there's one critical uh, fix that we wanna get in there we have our first patch release for jumping jellyfish, jumping jellyfish 10.0.1 coming out shortly. Um, and we have a uh, cookie koi. I've got some detail, more details on these schedules in a, in a couple slides here, but cookie koi, the first 
uh, release mile pre-release milestone will be coming up in the next few weeks. So jellyfish, which we finished in uh, in, in September, <clears throat> we released in September. We made the decision to uh, uprev to the Dunfell branch to Yakto 3.1. Originally, we were planning on 3.0, but when Yakto decided to uh, announce their long-term support version, we decided to jump right to that, which delayed had the effect of delaying the release a little bit, but we think it was worth it. Um, we've now got basically a feature equivalent demo um, with the new window manager and compositor uh, that matches the CES 2020 feature set demo set that we, we ran at, at CES. Um, we did some gap analysis from mem and uh, on, the, on some new features and we're trying to drive, uh, try we're trying to drive those new features in based on gap analysis that was done by the uh, steering committee. This is just the schedule that we ended up uh, um, working to throughout the year. You can see we actually did the uprev to Zeus, finished that in March, and then made the decision to uprev to Dunfell. Um, so the first patch release is now planned actually for uh, more like um, next week, not this week, and then. Uh, um, another really, and then, and then probably every month or two after that, we'll have patch releases going forward. Cookie Koi, which is what's coming up now. So we're continuing with the uh, Yakta 3.1. Um, we're looking at uh, 3.1.4 being released fairly soon and getting that into Cookie Koi. Um, instrument cluster uh, host container system uh, host system container is should be ready for Koi. Um, the AGL compositor window manager work should all be complete. Um, Egalia is working on upgrading to Chromium 79 and then making the associated web app manager changes that need to be done to make that work. If you saw the vert IO presentation that uh, Panasonic and um, um, <laughs> Lenaro and uh, Open System, Open Embedded Systems did uh, earlier today. You can see they're working on getting that in. We've got a rules-based arbitration system for um, for the GUI going in. For, it's a, a donation from Denso. And we should have the initial uh, reference hardware uh, system architecture BSP available. doing that. So here's the schedule for Koi. We've got a, the uh, first milestone release in uh, the end, towards the end of this month, and then uh, the final release in February, mid-February. And then we'll have the, the Kuki Koi patch releases, the 11.0 patch releases through, uh, through the, uh, at least the uh, first three quarters of next year. Our plan right now is to um, stick with the Dunfell branch 3.1 uh, into, you know, for its two full two year life cycle. Uh, so the next release after Koi will be called Lucky Lamprey. Um, and we'll plan on releasing that in, um, in July of next year. With the usual assortment of patch releases after that, oh, these date, that date is wrong. I gotta fix that. Um, and then a quick note: so we have uh, expert groups uh, in AGL that focus on a lot of different uh, areas. Uh, the active expert groups we have right now include uh, application framework, uh, connectivity, continuous integration, and automated test, uh, virtualization. Uh, reference hardware, speech, vehicle to cloud, instrument cluster, and the new one that we just announced and will just be starting up uh, next week is the Product Ready IBI expert group. So that work has been started within the uh, system architecture team, and now we're, we're transferring that to this uh, expert group, which will be led by Toyota, who uh, will have an update on the Product Ready work uh, tomorrow during the 
one of the sessions tomorrow. We'll also have a BOP session strictly dedicated to the instrument cluster tomorrow. We'll get an update from our instrument cluster expert group. Um, so you can ask more detailed instrument cluster questions then as well as uh, today. And then again, I'm gonna post these slides. I don't know if I got them on diskette already, but uh, our, our list of uh, developer resources. So where to find our documentation. <clears throat> Um, there's a getting started guide on the wiki. There's another actual getting starting guide on the documentation site. The documentation site just got refreshed. We had a, a student for the uh, Google season of docs who just finished up, did a really nice job refreshing the documentation site. Um, wiki pages have all of the, the expert group information. We, we use uh, JIRA for schedule and uh, issue tracking. Um, here's how you can find all the code. We use a, a Garrett instance for code reviews, and there's a Git mirror available. There's also a GitLab mirror, I believe, um, now that's available. I don't have that listed. And we have uh, a weekly developer call on Tuesday mornings, well, Tuesday morning, Chicago time, afternoon in Europe, evening in, in Asia. Uh, we have an IRC channel on Freenode, hash uh, automotive, and we have a developer community mailing list. So a lot of different inf ways to get information or ask questions about what's going on or try to get help um, from people in the community. Oh, that's last year. So last year we had uh, a lot of face-to-face -face workshops. We try to do something face-to-face -face about every two months, uh, get developers together in a room, hash out uh, any uh, upcoming roadmap or architecture or design issues, work on integration, you know, face-to-face -face hack fests for these integration sessions. Um, this year, of course, with COVID, we had to uh, cancel some of these and move some of them virtual. The next virtual face-to-face -face meeting is actually next week. Um, there's a link uh, here to our wiki page where you can you can sign up and get the agenda and uh, attend. That'll be held uh, on European time, so in the morning in Europe, in the afternoon in Japan, and the middle of night the middle of the night here in the U.S. So. Um, so that's it for my slides. I just really wanted to give a kind of a quick overview for people um, and open it up for questions. Uh, we have a number of people here. Uh, Jan Simon is here, I see. Uh, Scott is here. Uh, Lorenzo can answer any questions about web apps. So uh, if there's any questions, either put them in the chat or um, I'm supposing you could unmute your mic. I don't know how that works in this system. So are there any uh, are there any questions that you have for me or for anybody else about how AGL works or where to find things? Come on, someone's got to have a question. I know we just had an a um, ask the expert questions where there were some questions answered asked. So one question that was asked was, um, is uh, AGL ISO 26262 compliant? Um, the answer is right now, no. Um, we are, um, oh, ask your questions through the, chat tab at the bottom of your screen. Um, so uh, we are not at the moment uh, ISO 26262 compliant. We are working, we are now members, AGL is now a member of the ELISA project, em embedded Linux in safety applications. And we are, we act, we, we formed a, um, 
Automotive Working Group in conjunction with as part of ELISA and our instrument cluster expert group is actively working with um, actively working with the automotive group to uh, certify safety certify the instrument cluster that they're working on with the plan of trying to get something that is ready for a production system at the end of um, next year as soon as possible. So if you want to join, I could put a link and I could add a link to the Elisa project in my uh, list of uh, my set of links here. That might be a good idea. Elisa has their own mailing list and meetings and minutes and such. Yeah, Simon, do you want to spend a second to talk about the uh, continuous integration process that we have? Yeah, can do that. So um, to keep everything uh, running and stable, we have um, a continuous integration and automated testing uh, workflow in place. We host our code in Garrett. So we have a couple of Garrett repos. And uh, if there is any change submitted for review, we will do a CI build uh, using Jenkins. And um, once this is built, we will actually go ahead and put the software on, onto real boards, onto virtual machines, but also real boards to test drive it and um, run a test suite and give feedback to, uh, to the developers if uh, anything breaks. Um, so that has been uh, developed in the last um, in the last cycles. Um, and uh, we uh, are using um, how many how Jenkins, many boards do we said, have and how many boards do we have in CI these days? Um, it's about 10 boards, uh, 10 hardware boards. Um, um, and um, five different types times two. Um, so we have the, the Renaissance board, we have the Pi, we have the UpSquare, the VAU, the new Ref hardware. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's that's all. SandCloud or no? SandCloud, yes. So the big bone enhanced as well, yes. Anybody have any questions? Come on, you gotta have something. So another question that was asked in the ask the expert ask the experts seg seg uh, segment uh, a few minutes ago was um, if we're in any vehicles and we are currently in uh, Toyota's product line and uh, Subaru announced that uh, we would that AGL would be in the uh, 2021 model year 2021 products and uh, we should be hearing more from different manufacturers in the next year or so. Test, yes, worked. Okay, anybody else have anything? It's not much of a buff session if nobody asks any questions. I was just thinking about that. What are the plans to increase board support? 
uh, can comes from uh, I'm going to say Karthik, um, but it could be uh, Karthikian. Um, so we have the concept of um, reference boards and community boards. So where we have a member like Renaissance or SandCloud, um, we pro we will get the uh, we'll say official um, support from that vendor to uh, get their board into into the build system and they will provide boards to us for the CI. So that's where we got the, the, the VIU board for TI uh, in the past was a reference board. Um, the uh, re the uh, Renaissance uh, RCAR H3 right now and um, the SandCloud BeagleBone Enhanced are all reference boards. And then we have boards, we have boards and Q QMU, which are more community supported. Um, so uh, we, we are adding IMX, we have recently added IMX8 support, uh, NXP IMX8 support. Basically, if you have a, if, you're, if your board vendor um, has a VSP layer for Yocto, then we can, that's, you know, Dunfell, we can easily get it into our uh, CI system if there's a, a need to do it. Um, now, Simon, you're the you're the expert. You and Scott are the experts at getting these BSPs in. Um, you have any? Yeah. So for for the board support, there are two um, uh, two things. Basically, we need the uh, the uh, CPU cycles to build. Uh, the the platform um, so for that we need we need some sponsoring and uh, if you want to add a board you can also host uh, a lava lab uh, which is basically a remote worker that connects to our lava server and uh, in that way we can uh, push um, test jobs to that board in question. So that's an easy way to, to give access to a development board um, and let us test on it um, without shipping things around the world. Yeah, and that, that's worked pretty well for us. So um, if you had a board you wanted to add to the, to the, to the board farm, you could add that, you know, we can add that remotely. I think as someone who's done a few boards <laughs> and maintained <laughs> a few of the other templates for other ones. So the, the, the big thing uh, when I basically, I mean, I guess a couple of, of requirements from the BSP are that the kernel be relatively new, um, newer the better for the most part. Um, but at this point, I think we're, uh, if you were older than I think 414, you'd probably have to, we'd have to resurrect some patches uh, that we have uh, dropped for older than that. Uh, and uh, whale and support would be the other one because uh, uh, you pretty much yeah. would want the, to support whale and in, in Weston that are in Dunfell, which is 8.0.0. Um, you'd have some work to try and make AGL work against a BSP that didn't have that at this point. So those are the kind of big yes. ones. That yeah, was the hang right. up for IMX8 actually, why it didn't go in until earlier this year was, it was a mismatch in the the driver stack with respect to, to Weston, so. Yeah. Yeah, right. So with, with, with Dunfell, we are, mostly on 5.4 plus minus uh, on the uh, patch release number for all the boards. Which you want to be on at this point anyways, because it has, I think, six years. <laughs> support if you uh 5 .4. I, uh, yeah five dot four is is i think going to be with super long term as i think greg refers to them so um, 
of the currently long-term support at that, 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 that route, um, 5.10 is going to be LTS too, but I think 5.4 probably is the best bet for shipping and something that's going to be in the market for, you know, for five plus time. years for a while. Right. Unless you're really good with, you know, over the air updates and are confident you have a good rolling release workflow, which is, I think, uh, Kate's discussion earlier about at least uh, that was one of the recommendations that I think they're making is to, to try and stay on mainline. So uh, another question from Karthikian. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, when can we see AGL on commercial or passenger vehicles? So just to reiterate, we AGL is in the um, Toyota and the Subaru now. Um, but keep in mind, um, we don't expect that the um, we don't expect that the UI that we ship anybody would ship. These are just demo. These are just reference and demo uh, user interfaces. The the advantage of AGL is that any manufacturer can then um, take that take our base platform and build out on top of that whatever whatever UI whatever user interface they want, and uh, you know we're providing uh, you know bindings for uh, Qt as well as uh, HTML5 web apps, so you can you can basically have the look and feel of uh you know have whatever look and feel you want using using agl and you know have your branding uh have your branding be available however you want to do it so um i would not expect that we would ever see the agl apps as we show them uh in our demo to be showing up in vehicles but the more the back end um more the back end stuff probably have to have a, a QT license to actually ship the demos <laughs> in a vehicle. Yeah. That would be one, one issue that you'd have to resolve. Right. Yes. I'm, <laughs> thank you. Um, how can I start up? So I can, uh, I have your uh, contact information from the, uh, um, uh, from the the uh, conference center, we can set up a meeting with you to discuss uh, how you can take advantage of that separately. Um, Dan Kaushi and and myself can meet with you and and talk about joining AGL and uh, how you can leverage that. So I can say, if you can send me an email, my email address is on the top is on the cover page of this or I'll, I can grab it from our uh, from our list. Any other questions? I want to port my flutter based real time fuel priced app to AGL. How do I go about this and who can I discuss this with? Oh, Flutter, that's an interesting question. So um, we know, I think there was a uh, presentation at ELC Europe about, was it Sony? Yeah, someone from Sony was talking about their research effort into it. Yeah. It wasn't for automotive per se, but. Yes, yeah, so, so we do not support Flutter at this point. And of course, as Jan Simon would say, Patches welcome. <laughs> um, if somebody wants to port Flutter onto AGL, um, we of course would welcome that into our Garrett. Um, right now, we do not have that on our roadmap. And um, I have heard uh, from one of our member companies some discussion of um, them porting it and making it available, you know, donating it to AGL. But I, I can't really say if or when that'll really happen. Um, so um, it, it's really hard to talk about a flutter right now on AGL. I mean, it's certainly something that we would welcome, but I don't have any concrete plans for that, Bernard. It's it's viewed as non-trivial. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's very non-trivial. 
the uh, there's some significant development work on someone's part to to make it happen. However, just to mention on top of that, um, that there's also some possibilities to 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 bundle Flutter web apps uh, and package them and use a web runtime to 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 run on them. Uh, at some point, we should be able to actually. Yeah, it's some proof of concept of doing that as, as already some APIs could be connected with existing Flutter applications if they are bundled uh, and run into the system. But yeah, it's, it's something that still has to be to be uh, proved as, as right. a prototype. Okay, does anybody else have anything? Any questions? I think I talked to Dan Kaushi. I think the uh, training group was giving away Linux Foundation caps. I need to get a Linux Foundation cap for these events. What do you need, Walt? The cap? <laughs> Did you see that the the training group? If you if you uh, if you signed up, you get either a Linux Foundation, a uh, Penguin Plush, or a uh -huh. Linux Foundation cap. I need a uh -huh. Linux Foundation cap. <laughs> yeah, we can have some caps. Maybe AGL on it. <laughs> yeah, AGL caps. There you go. No problem. We'll get that for the next AMM. Good idea. It is, it's cold in my it's cold in my office. I gotta wear a hat. <laughs> I got to wear a hat to hide my long hair because I haven't had a haircut in six months <laughs> or longer, actually much more than six months. Come to think of it, eight months. Okay. Anybody else have a question? I'll give you another two minutes to, answer, to ask a question. So just to reiterate, so the AGL is a member of at least two other, we, we belong now to at least two other uh, Linux Foundation projects that we actively participate in. The ELISA project for functional safety and the Yocto project where uh, Jan Simon is on the advisory board of the Yocto project. So, uh, and with the ELISA project, we now have a, uh, an automotive work group that we've started um, in conjunction with ELISA to work on safety certification of uh, the uh, instrument cluster. And uh, I think we were big uh, proponents of uh, um, the uh, automotive, uh, we were big proponents of the, I'm sorry, the LTS version that Yakto did. Um, support for AWS IoT Alexa on AGL. So Alexa, yes. what's that? I said the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. So Alexa, we have available, um, although the latest, I think Scott was trying to get the latest um, Alexa Auto SDK 3.0, we don't have working. Well, uh, yeah, 3.0, 3 we can't, well, is involved because uh, Amazon themselves have sort of dropped their efforts on AGL support. So 2.3 is the latest version that has yeah, the voice agent in it for AGL. Uh, but my efforts to get it working so far have uh, hit some snags. I'll try and get back to that soon. Um, uh, I have a sandbox branch in, in AGL Garrett that I posted to the mailing list about a couple weeks ago if someone wants to try it. But I believe Jens, Jens Simone and I have coordinated. He sees the same issue that I see. So it involves digging around in the guts of the auto SDK to debug what's going on. So, right. But, uh, yeah, 3.0 will have to 
if we want to support it, we'll have to basically do the voice agent uplift ourselves. So that's a that's a, I think a, above my pay grade. So <laughs> for the uh, AWS question, um, I just put a link in the chat window. So if you click on that link, it brings you to the AWS website that shows the uh, integration with AGL. Basically, there's a section at the bottom with a diagram. <clears throat> and the vehicle to cloud uh, expert group is working on getting some stuff into the code base. The guys from um, Mira, but they changed names. Um, Got some stuff into 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 Garrett recently. See now, Bernard, your question—that's just speaking a different language to me. Um, maybe maybe Lorenzo could answer. Could could it... that's what Lorenzo was talking about? Was that's what I thought? Compiling it to the JavaScript backend and and running it inside the the Chromium set up that uh, Lorenzo and his team have put together. Right. But no one's tried it yet, I think is what. Yeah, I, I was doing uh, like a very simple example and, and like initially it should be possible to have that working with uh, some, some of the more complicated components were having some issues. We are actually working on, on upgrading the, the Chromium web runtime. So I was like, uh, delaying this effort to test with more complicated Flutter examples. But there, there's already some documentation in place uh, about Flutter on how to compile that using just um, in, including the web support for Flutter in target. And then uh, some components and some widgets were actually working fine in the, in the existing web runtime in AGL. But it would be just a matter of getting a, like a more complicated example, connecting it with specific uh, the application framework APIs, and and getting that for some more complex proof of concept. I mean, we we are happy to on, on trying to help on setting this example and uh, helping to to have these pieces uh, testing altogether. So of course, uh, Bernard, you're always welcome to engage Agalia. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we are we are happy to 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 talk about that. Okay. Anybody else have anything today? All right, going once. All right, well, thanks everybody. If there's nothing else, we'll uh, we'll wrap up the uh, the BOF session here, and I hope to see you down the road, so to speak. <laughs>